The project was approved by ADB Board in December 2006 and became effective in 2007. We all know that extension and research, you know, particularly focusing on the poor people, are so important for inclusive growth. Actually, this is the only one project in the bank on research and extension for, for agriculture. The return for the extension component was about 73%, and the return, or the so-called EIRR, for the research component was uh, 52%. Interestingly, all output, you know, outcomes and impact of the project are all achieved within the period of the project. This is highly significant because usually an impact of any project, you know, we wouldn't assess until five years after the project is closed. The outcome was to strengthen the agriculture uh, and science system and to improve linkage between research and extension, and that has also been achieved. First of all, I think the most important part about this project is that we have to have a change of mindset about poor people. Until now, most people perceive the poor as people who are not very hardworking, illiterate, or not knowledgeable. But to me, the poor are very efficient because they have so little, they have to maximize the resources they have. One of the key factors in this project is that the poor are treated as clients. So we have to maintain good services to the clients. So in that way, we change the mindset of the extension worker and the extension system. In this project, the poverty targeting was very successful. We don't just use statistics to say that these are the poor people. There were communal, uh, transparent, participatory process where the whole commune sit together and endorse the status as poor who can receive uh, benefit from the project. They have to debate among themselves and the poor have to justify why I should receive the benefit from this project. After the successful poverty targeting, again the poor were treated as a client in the sense that their needs were uh, assessed. You know, They told the project what they need. It's not extension worker saying that you need this. Based on that, uh, extension contract were designed based on the needs of the poor. Then this extension project or proposal were bid out and called for proposal. In the traditional system of public expenditure management for extension system is that um, extension station in a local area would receive a fixed amount of budget and then they would go out and say, okay, this year we will do this type of extension for the farmer. And there's no competition in the system at all. This is turning the system around by going out to the poor and ask first what they need. Yeah. And then based on the, the need, extension proposal were developed, announced in the public media to local newspaper and TV. And it allowed for other agencies beyond the extension station to participate in the bidding system. So we have local research institutes, we have vocational school. These agencies have the technical know-how, but until now they were not allowed to participate in the extension uh, system because basically the extension station monopolized it. So the monopoly was killed. And through the bidding process, you know, the one with the best proposal received the bid. Another strong component of this uh, project is about improve linkage between research and extension and especially to focus the research for poor people and ethnic minority in remote areas. In the AST, the design was such that a lump sum amount was set and kept at the uh, kept for this uh, innovative research program. A criteria was developed. Right? I asked the poor people how the extension program in this project benefit you differently. Based on my experience with one of the lady, you know, she explained to me that under the traditional system, the extension worker would give a variety of pig that is not so good, but the service provider gave her a very good variety of uh, pig of the mother sow, and this pig last year gave her seven piglets. Based on the rule of uh, poverty sharing, she gave away two piglets to other poor family. But with the five piglets, she was able to earn enough income to uh, erase her, her death. And this year, she proudly showed me that she has 10 piglets.
and these ten piglets is going to be the ticket for her children to go to school. And the pig manure was uh, used in her little patch of, of maize, and she said the yield of the maize is two five times more than before because she was able to use manure properly. So her life transformed, you know, totally within the period of 17 months that uh, she got involved with the project. So this is some of the example why the return to the extension system was as high as 72%, you know, within a short time. So basically, to treat the poor as clients and to introduce competition in the extension system. The project basically called for nationwide submission of research proposal from research institute, but made it a condition that the research that will be financed under this project must be developed bottom up. So the research will prioritize those that will bring about new innovation based on traditional knowledge and traditional varieties of plant and crops in the region and that the poor people are, are using. So with that design, the outcome was that I think uh, we, we granted 125 small research grants. You know, I think this is out of about 680 research proposals that were submitted. We were able to prioritize research for women researchers, for younger researchers, and for many new innovative ideas. And because of that, the linkage between research and extension was strengthened. The outcome of the research were immediately applicable for use in extension. So out of 125, we selected about 76 that were ready for extension. And the research program also was designed in a participatory manner. So poor, poor farmers themselves become part of the farm, on-farm trial and provide input to the research outcome. So that's another factor or another innovation in the AST that allow the AST to achieve its success so early and so effective. And that's why the return to research of 53% is achieved within two years of the research program. We all know that agriculture is most vulnerable to climate change. Agriculture also employ about 70% of people, the rural population of most developing countries in Asia about DMC. I hope that the experience from this project will be shared widely among DMCs so that this modality can be extended in other countries and to prepare the poor to adapt to climate change more effectively uh, with the support of the public sector.